Our Father, we thank you very much for what we're learning from the scriptures and from the lives of other people that have gone before us. That was their time. This is our time. What you've done through them, you can do through any of us here. We're praying, O oh Lord, that you'll raise up giants in faith out of your people who are here ministering the gospel in Jesus' name. Let your power be upon our lives. Let the Spirit possess everyone. And let the gifts flow out through every one of us as we go back to the field in Jesus' name. Show us tonight the power of Christ in our lives, in our ministry. We pray that Christ will live big through every one of us in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. In our evening revival messages, we'll be concentrating on portions of Matthew chapter 8 and chapter 9. As you look at these two chapters, when you read very closely, you will identify 10 different definite miracles. And you will find there are other miracles too that are very general. And then you will find the miracles cover every need of man. Disease, demons, death, and all the things are covered that shows us how powerful God is, how powerful Christ is. The historical records in the Gospels, they show us very clearly that Jesus Christ performed so many miracles of healing that he literally banished sickness and disease from Palestine. He healed all manner of sicknesses and diseases. He went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. And he's still the same today in power and compassion. He has given the same power to his disciples. And he has more disciples today than he had during his earthly ministry. If his present day disciples will do what he expects us to do, the church will be stronger and healthier. And the world around us will experience many miracles of healing, deliverance, and other kinds of miracles. As you come to the beginning of Matthew chapter 8, you start with a miracle, the cleansing of a leper. But I need to tell you the connection between Matthew chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 4. At the end of Matthew chapter 4, we read in verse 23, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. And then in verse 24, and his fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with divers different various diseases and torments, and those which were possessed with devils, and those that were lunatic. And then we're told, that those that had the palsy or paralysis, and he healed them. He never left a case that he didn't deal with. He healed the sick. And in fact, he tells us, as he recounts the ministry, when John the Baptist sent some of his own disciples to check up, in Matthew chapter 11, reading from verse 2. Now, when John was, when John had heard in the prison the words of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Art thou he that shall come? Or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Go, and show John again those things which ye do hear and see. What were they seeing? What were they hearing? Here we have in verse 5, The blind receive their sight, the limb walk, the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached unto them. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. Tonight we are taking verses 
1 to 17. And I'm dividing that into three parts. Number one, the power of Christ over an incurable disease. Number two, perfect cure for an incapacitating disease. Perfect cure for an incapacitating disease. Number three, personal consolation and healing of innumerable diseases. Personal consolation and healing of innumerable diseases. Let's come back to chapter 8, verse 1. It says, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. That introduces us to chapters 8 and 9. Of course, you know, by chapters 5, 6, and 7, precede, come before this chapter 8. He had been teaching them. And now he goes from the Sermon on the Mount to the signs of the Messiah. He had taught them with authority. You have heard the said days unto you. But I say unto you, who is this one teaching with authority? Is the one that wanted to prove to them, give them the credentials that this is none other than the Messiah. And so, after he finished the Sermon on the Mount, he followed on with the signs of the Messiah. Let's put it this way. In chapters 5, 6, and 7, you have his words. In chapters 8 and 9, you have his works, his wonder. In chapters 5, 6, and 7, you have his marvelous doctrine. When you come to chapters 8 and 9, you come to his mighty deeds. When you look at those messages he gave, you're looking at the message of holiness. When you turn over and you come to chapters 8 and 9, you are coming to the miracles of healing. He has a public teaching on that side. On this side now, he has a personal touch. And he was uh, proving now that he was the Messiah, actually confirming his words with signs following. After he had taught his disciples, showing them the way of holiness and the way of the life of the kingdom. He now comes to work the miracles that will prove he was no ordinary person. Do we need, don't we need to say that as Christ is, so should his chosen ministers be. When you preach the word in chapters 5, 6, and 7, you follow on, you follow up with the works and the wonders, the miracles. You talk about holiness in the teaching. Then you talk about healing, and you demonstrate the healing for the signs to follow and to confirm the word. And so we are told, as they have listened to him, now they followed after, and as they followed after, here came a leper. Look at it in verse 2. And behold, there came a leper, and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus put forth his hands and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus saith unto him, See, thou tell no man, but go thy way, and show thyself to the priest. And offer the gift that Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. Pick up this case and look at this case from two perspectives. Number one, from the perspective of a person in need. There is a sickness, an incurable disease that somebody has and he wants to get healed. What are the steps we learn in the passage that I've read to you? Whereby the person can take the same steps and he will receive his miracle of healing. Take it from the other perspective. You're a minister of the gospel. And then you want to minister to the people. They've been long in that sickness. And they've looked for kinds of cure, but they have not been able to get the cure. What are the things you're expecting? the patient or the person to manifest so that the power of Christ will be manifested in their lives. Before I go into the details, I need to remind you that leprosy was an incurable disease in Israel. In fact, you can count the people that had leprosy that were healed. You remember Miriam? Then you remember Naaman? 
And then in the Old Testament, you do not find other cases of cleansing and healing. But then you come to the New Testament and you find that Jesus Christ, after he had delivered the message, now to show the credentials of the Messiah, he did something that had not been done for thousands of years. And the leper came forward and the leper worshipped him and the leper said, if you will, if you want to, you can make me clean. And leprosy was such a serious sin, it separated the people, that is, the lepers, from the congregation. That's why the Bible likens leprosy to sin. In fact, there, is a, there are striking similarities between sin, leprosy and sin. Number one, both are unclean and defiling. When somebody has leprosy, it's unclean. It's defiled. When somebody is a sinner, he has not met the Lord, it's unclean, it's defiled. Number two, leprosy separates from God's people. They will put them outside the camp, and then if they were coming on the way, so that nobody will come near them, they will be seen unclean, unclean. And what does sin do? Sin makes us outcast from the Lord. Number three, both of them, leprosy and sin, they begin imperceptibly. But then eventually, the hands are off, the legs are off. It brings deformity. Isn't that the same with sin? Sin will begin in an imperceptible manner. And before you know what, the man is deformed and defiled. Not only that, leprosy is contagious. That means interaction spreads leprosy. When you think about sin, association spreads sin. And then we know that there was nobody that could handle the problem of leprosy. Only Jesus Christ. That means no help, no hope of cleansing in man. And when you think about sin, the same thing. Only Jesus Christ could deal with leprosy. And only Jesus Christ can deal with leprosy and with sin. Now I look at this man. And then what did this man do? And you are thinking, what am I going to do? If I'm going to have the healing virtue of Christ flow into my body and do that thing that others have not been able to do. Number one, an act of worship. An act of worship. Behold, there came a leper and he worshipped him. That's the first thing. You are thinking about the Lord. You are exalting the Lord. He inhabits the praises of his children. When that act of worship is there, you are not blaming the Lord for your sickness. You are not blaming the Lord for your disease. You are not blaming the Lord for your predicament. You see him as a king of kings and the Lord of lords. And whatever may be happening to you, you know that he has power. He has compassion. He is able to do all things. Number one, an act of worship. This leper came and then uh, he worshipped the Lord. And true worship will activate the power of God on our behalf. You try it. If you have any problem, you sing unto the Lord. You praise the Lord. You remember Jehoshaphat. You remember Paul and Silas. They sang praises to the Lord. And as they were worshipping the Lord, their yokes were broken. Number two, acceptance of his will. The man came. He said, Lord, he owned him, Lord. He said, I submit, I gladly take whatever decision you make on me. And uh, here we have acceptance of his will. He said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Maybe he wasn't sure of what the will of the Lord will be. Because he had not known uh, the, the mind of the Lord. And the Lord had not proved too many things uh, to the people of Israel. Not only that, he was a leper far removed away from the people. But he said, whatever the will is, here I am. I am submitting to your will. We know better. You know the will of God from the promises of the Lord. You know the will of God from the illustrations of what the Lord has done. He's healed other people. He never rejected anyone. And Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Number three, the assurance of his willingness. I will. He said, the leper said, I'm not sure you want to. I'm not sure if you want to. But he said, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus did not beat about the bush, about the leper, or about any other one. Assurance of his willingness. And today he's still willing. If you are sick, he's willing to heal you tonight. 
I said he's willing to heal you tonight. If sickness is in family anywhere and you are coming to the Lord, he will assure you of his willingness to heal you tonight. Number four, attestation of his wonder. Now immediately, Jesus stretched forth his hand and he touched him. And then he said, I will be thou cleansed. And the Bible says at the end of verse 3, and immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And then it said, Jesus says unto him, See, thou tell no man. Many people stumble on that part of verse 4. It is said, Jesus said, See, you don't tell any man, which means cover it up. Don't talk about it. Don't give testimony about it. You have been healed. Keep quiet. They don't understand. They don't understand. Jesus was telling the man, he, number one, because in the Old Testament, before a leper will be sent outside the camp, the priest and the high priest will test him, and they, they, they test in Leviticus. And in Leviticus, they will go through all the tests. They will pronounce him a leper. And then as they pronounced him a leper, they put him outside the camp. And he couldn't come back, according to the Old Testament in Leviticus, without his going back to those priests and telling them, I am healed. And they will not just take that, they will examine him again. And all the tests are there for them to carry out. And when they see that he passed the test and everything is now okay, they will release him back to the society. And Jesus is saying, yes, I heal, but I don't support lawlessness. And it will be lawlessness to just release him, just go everywhere now and be announcing, leper could not do that. You go back to those priests. That's what he told him. He said, don't tell any man yet, but go to the priest and show yourself to them. And then they will test you. But that's the greatest publicity that Jesus Christ could have. You understand? At that time, no television. At that time, no radio. How will they know about it? All the Jews will go to the synagogue. And uh, the, uh, the priests and the high priests, they were the authorities in media. They were the people, if they announced anything, it was so. And think about this. And all the ceremony of cleansing of the leper in uh, Le Leviticus chapter 13 and chapter 14 had been there for more than 1,000 years. And they had not performed that ceremony. They had been trained in their schools that when a leper is cleansed, this is what you will do. This is what you will do. First year. 10 years, 20 years, a priest has been a priest for 40 years. He had never performed that ceremony. His father, a priest, had never performed that ceremony. And then thousands of years are gone. And then now a leper was cleansed. And he will go to the priest. And he will say, now you need to perform the ceremony for me. I am cleansed. Look at your record. You confirmed I was a leper before. Look at me now. Everything is okay. And then they will ask, who did it? For a testimony unto them. Is this not the Messiah? A person that did what Elijah did not do. A person that did, although Elisha did it, but uh, Naaman had to go into the river Jordan seven times. And then Isaiah, a great prophet. Jeremiah, a great prophet. Ezekiel, a great prophet. And Daniel, and all those people, they never did. And then a period of uh, 400 years, silent years, nothing like this. And for the first time, this person that is talking with authority, he has cleansed a leper. Then they'll be asking themselves, is this not the Messiah? And then they will now have to announce on the Sabbath day, something happened. This must be the Messiah. That's why Christ told the man, don't tell any ordinary man. Go and tell the officials and confirm this ministry of the Messiah. So that shows you the first thing. The first thing is Christ is able to kill the incurable. Is able to remove leprosy. If you have any problem tonight, Christ is still here. How many of you know Christ is here? And Christ will do it in Jesus' name. I go to point number two. It's perfect cure of an incapacitating disease. It's in Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, 
my servant lies at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And uh, Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. What a wonderful thing. See, Jesus Christ had not spent too long a time with the people. When you think of the time that Jesus started his ministry in Matthew chapter 4, and then Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7, is just a straightforward single message that he gave in one single day. And now he came to chapter 8, and there's a Gentile, a centurion. By the way, whenever you meet a centurion in the New Testament, they appear to be people that love the Lord. Do you see the man here? A centurion. And do you remember Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 another centurion, a devout man unto the Lord, but come back now we're talking about this particular centurion and the faith he had, the confidence he had, but uh, not to jump uh, things let me start from number one, number one an impressive compassion if you know the history of that time, the uh, servants were like slaves they were like tools and uh, if they were sick, nobody cared at all. But you see this uh, centurion, uh, that means a soldier having a hundred soldiers under him that he controlled. He had an impressive compassion. He didn't treat uh, that uh, man, that servant, as just a tool. And then he came on behalf of that servant. How that you strike something within us that if you have any relative, you have anybody at home, any dependent at all, when that person is sick and you know that Jesus can heal, with that kind of impressive compassion, you come on their behalf to the Lord. And then, number two, an incomparable condescension. Jesus Christ said, I will come and heal him. No Jew will ever tell a Gentile that. None of those Pharisees will ever have told uh, that centurion that an incomparable condescension. He said, I'm going to come and I'm going to heal him. Of course, Jesus could have spoken the word there. He knew the power he had, but instead of just sending the healing, he condescended after all. He had come from heaven to earth. And now he was going to leave his position. He was going to follow this Gentile home and enter a Gentile house, which the Jews were too proud to do. But then we find the man. The man said, you want to come to my house? I'm a Gentile. You are Lord. You are king. You have authority and power in a realm where you don't know anything. I don't have anything at all. Speak the word only. Number three, an implicit confidence. Confidence in Christ. Unshakable confidence that if Christ will speak the word, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. That's what the Lord is looking for in you when a minister is preaching. And when a minister is ministering, and you know that that minister has Christ in him, you look beyond him, you look beyond his ability, you look beyond his anointing, you look beyond the testimonies you have even heard, you said, I thank God for those testimonies. But not only that, I see Christ in him. I know Christ has called him. I know Christ has appointed him. And I know Christ is walking through him. And through the power of Christ in him, he doesn't need to come to me. He doesn't need to take hold of me. He doesn't need to touch me. He doesn't need to shake me. Let him speak the word only and I will be healed. You will be healed in Jesus' name. Implicit confidence. And he explained why he said that. He said, because, look at verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only and my servant shall be healed, for I'm a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he cannot argue, he goeth. And I say to another, come, and he cannot resist, he cometh. And to my servant do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus therefore heard it, he marveled, and then said unto them that followed, 
Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. If you will manifest that same thing today, and you will say, tonight I'm going to be healed. Tonight I'm going to be delivered. Tonight, my problems are all solved. And if you are standing proxy for another person, what I mean is the centurion himself wasn't sick. And the man that was sick was not even there with the centurion. It's just like you now. Here you are. And maybe you are not sick, but there is somebody far back at home, like the, like the centurion servant. And the fellow is sick over there. And you are saying over here that Jesus is here. Am I right? The power of the Lord is flowing here tonight. Am I right? Speak the word only. Mother at home will be healed. Daddy at home will be healed. My wife at home will be healed. My husband at home will be healed. That child that they said she will never grow out of that thing, the thing will be there until she lives a miserable life and eventually dies. Tonight we take authority over that thing. And that child at home will be healed in Jesus' name. Implicit confidence. Number four, an instructive contrast. An instructive contrast. He said, no, I've never found faith like this, not in Israel. Think about it. The Israelites that ought to have faith. Because naturally, they belong to Abraham, the father of faith. Naturally, in their national history, they should have remembered the parting of the Red Sea. In their national history, they should have remembered the dividing of River Jordan. In their national history, they should have remembered the supply of manna for 40 years. They should be the people that will have faith. But look at this Gentile coming from the Gentile world. What the Israelites could not do, what they did not believe, he believed. And he made a contrast. You know, it says... Jesus marvel. There was one other time that that word marvel is used concerning the Lord Jesus Christ and it says he marveled at their unbelief. The children of Israel, they had such a terrible unbelief, he marveled. And then the Gentile, he had such a great faith, he marveled. An instructive contrast. Look at it now as we move downwards, uh, reading it from verse, uh, verse 11. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and from the west and shall sit down with Abraham uh, with an Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. And the children of the kingdom, the Israelites, shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth and inescapable condemnation. Inescapable condemnation. Because the light came. And they did not accept the light. Because they rejected the light, he said, the prostitutes, the hallows, they get into the kingdom of God before them. That in fact, from the east and from the west, many, many people will come and they will be in the kingdom. But these children of Abraham, they will be cast out of the kingdom. And then number six, an instantaneous kill. An instantaneous kill. Look at verse 13. It says, And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was, was the next word? Was the next word? Healed in the self same hour. That's what is going to happen to you tonight. I said, that's what's going to happen to you tonight. You will get your miracle in Jesus' name. Now we have learned about the centurion. Although the sick fellow was away, far back at home, he came. And then as he came, he said, I want to collect the healing. Are you sick yourself? No, I'm not sick. How about the person that you want to get healed? No, he's not here. How will you know when the fellow is healed? You don't know by the feeling of his body. You know it by the envelope of faith. He said, I have an envelope here. 
put it inside here. And it's not a physical thing. It's not a tangible material thing. It's a word of power, the word of authority. My faith will collect it in the envelope and then I'm going to get back home. It is not what he feels at home. It is not the symptom of his body at home. We do not consider his body almost now dead, all now, almost now being tormented, but we consider the word of him that cannot lie. When you are receiving the healing, you don't consider the symptom. You don't look at your body. You don't look at what the doctors have said. You look at what the Lord has said. Speak the word only, and you will be healed tonight in Jesus' name. I go to point number three, personal consolation and healing of innumerable diseases personal consolation and the healing of innumerable diseases matthew chapter 8 reading from verse 14 and when jesus was come the, into peter's house he said unto uh, unto his wife he said he saw his wife's mother lay laid and sick of a fever and jesus touched her and the fever left her and she arose and ministered unto them do you see that personal touch there and the lord is here tonight he will touch you like that whatever the sickness is you know something about jesus christ if it is fever jesus will not say well endure that it's not a serious matter it's fever after all it comes once in a while you can hold on to that but if it's blindness a very serious thing i will see how to handle that whether it's blindness or paralysis or deformity or leprosy or just ordinary fever ordinary malaria the lord will touch that patient and you will be healed in in Jesus name and then we find the healing of innumerable diseases reading out from verse 16 and when the evening was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirits with his word and he healed all that were sick that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by says the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bear our sicknesses himself took our are you part of that hour i said are you part of that group it says he took our infirmities and then he took our sicknesses as he taking your sicknesses as he taking your deformity as he taking your problem away why is what's the thing finding in your body then that thing is a stranger there he thought not to be there and christ is here tonight he will send that thing out of your body and of your family in jesus name just two things to notice there number one he ministered in the fullness of power jesus went about and then we are told he had the holy ghost and power with him he had the spirit beyond above measure number one he ministered in the fullness of power number two he ministered for the fulfillment of prophecy that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by himself the prophet himself not another one himself took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses and tonight he is here i said tonight he is here and tonight he is going about in all the halls and outside doing good and healing all that are pressed of the devil he will touch you rise up and get the touch of the lord tell the lord what's the problem there was the infirmity there you tell the lord touch me tonight because christ is going about in the fullness of power for the fulfillment of prophecy and whatever problem is there the lord will take everything away open your mouth and talk to the lord you are a child of god you are a minister of the gospel no infirmity no sickness has any right to be there don't look at your body look at your god don't look at the feeling in the body. Look at the faith you have in Christ. Implicit confidence and faith in the Lord. See that centurion? He wasn't even a disciple yet. And he wasn't a worker. He wasn't a minister. You have claim and you have right to the healing strength and healing virtue of the Lord. And Jesus has not changed. The same yesterday, today, and forever is there with you, my brother. It's there with you, my sister. Believe it. Believe it with that implicit confidence and faith and trust in the Lord, and you are free.
speak the word only and I will be healed and my servant will be healed and my loved ones will be healed yes they will be healed in Jesus name we pray amen just uh, have your heads bowed and your eyes closed it's not uh, too much a uh, long uh, talking and praying you see how the centurion came you see how the leper came the leper simply just worshipped and then said lord if you will i know you can make me clean he said i will and that was the end of it and the end of your problem has come tonight and the centurion said, I don't need to take all the trouble to, uh, to move on and to come to my house. Speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. If you are standing there for yourself or if you are standing there for a loved one, picture that individual now. And picture the Lord gets into that individual now. And we are going to speak the word on behalf of Christ. And your brother, your sister, your mother, your relative, that person sick at home or in the hospital will be healed in Jesus' name. It's only when you have that faith, that implicit confidence, that you know that tonight is that night of the healing, that night of the deliverance. When you are sure of that, then you raise up your hand. You know Christ will not fail you, then you raise up your hand. You know Christ will not disappoint you, then you raise up your hand. Then you, you know that Christ loves you. He will not allow you to continue to suffer. You raise up your hand. You are very, very sure beyond a shadow of doubt. He will take your problem away. Then you raise up your hand. And it doesn't have to be a one-hour prayer. It doesn't have to be all through the night. One sentence. Be healed. You are healed in Jesus' name. Keep up your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you very much tonight because you are that God that will never fail. And we know that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is here tonight. And he's here so that he can heal, so that he can deliver. Oh Lord, I pray for all my brothers, all my sisters. Touch them, heal them in Jesus' name. Their bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. They are the temples of God. And sickness, infirmity, deformity, or whatever it is, even spirit, it, they do not have any right to be there. Therefore, I command sickness, infirmity, or tormenting spirit, come out in Jesus' name. When we mention that name, no sickness can remain. When we mention that name, no evil power can remain. When we mention that name, no curse, no yoke can remain. I break every yoke. I destroy the works of the devil. I pronounce you healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that you touch them. And I pray that you manifest your power. That the healing will be definite in their bodies right now in Jesus' name. I pray for their loved ones at home. Maybe a wife, maybe an husband, maybe a child, maybe a parent, or just a close relative. Somebody they are concerned about. I pray, oh Lord, where they are now, touch them with your miracle healing power in Jesus' name. By the time my brothers and sisters go back home, I pray, oh Lord, they will see that loved one healed, made whole in Jesus' name. Confirm that miracle. Confirm it in my brothers and sisters here. Confirm it in the loved ones at home. Do it and make it permanent, O oh Lord. I pray, O oh Lord, that whatever special sin, special miracle that your people are asking you, do it for them, Lord. Confirm it in their lives, O oh Lord. Confirm it in their ministry too. And I pray that you give them the power. You give them the authority that when they chew, when they pray for the sick, and when they pray with anointing, with authority, the sick will be healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. How many of you are sure you have still got it? You've got the victory. Just praise the Lord. The victory will remain permanent in Jesus' name.